because we're trying to get Congress to put pressure on the FDA to change or at least uh, better explain what the testing methodology should, methodology should be so that consumers are not deceived and are getting what they're really supposed to be getting. Welcome to Price File. Welcome to Price File. This is Mike here, and I have the legendary Mark Glazier of Nutribio. Thanks so much for joining us here today, Mark. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Appreciate doing great. It. Yeah, no, we, we thank you even more. So uh, recently on your Facebook page, and it is a public page, so I'm going to make a link to this. You posted a video from Congress, and that's that's why I wanted to invite you on the channel here to talk about what exactly you were doing uh, down in D.C. and uh, and how it would uh, affect any of the consumers out there, what you're trying to push for. So that's kind of where I wanted to, to start this conversation and see what, uh, what a supplement industry uh, owner like yourself and someone who's very influential uh, and very well read in the manufacturing laws, what you think uh, could use a little bit of uh, help out there in Congress? Well, I, I think there's, you know, there's a lot of associations out there. There's the Natural Products Association, uh, the Council for uh, uh, Nutrition, the AHPA. There's a bunch of organizations out there. Council for Responsible Nutrition, I'm sorry. And a lot of these are lobbyist groups out there. And we don't realize as manufacturers and as brand owners and store owners that there's a lot going on behind the scenes. There's a lot of people that are dedicating time and effort, not just for the last year or two, but I've met people out there for, for two decades that have been out there trying to uh, you know, defend our industry and build our industry and protect our industry. So there's a lot of stuff going on out there. You know, I'm not going to by any means say I've been doing it for many, many years, but I like to get involved because I'm very passionate about certain aspects of it that you know from for many years. You are. But you know, as even a store owner or a brand owner, you don't realize what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, and there are great organizations out there. When we think of lobbyist groups, we're always thinking about these big lobbyist organizations that people are talking about paying off senators and paying off congressmen <laughs> so they get something built here and something done there and they can rip off consumers. But in our industry, it's not really like that. It's looking at the long-term protection of the industry. You know, how do we, we're going to talk about SARMs and, and stuff like that. Or, and what what is done there? Uh, you know, something as simple as natural the, of a natural product you know there is no FDA definition of a natural product you know and that's a long-term approach of like the NPA is trying to get the FDA to define what you what a natural product is because we all know what's going out on out there there's attorneys out there that are suing every other company every other day in all type of class action suits because there's no definition so the consumer is getting screwed because of that companies like myself or everybody else out there can't really put the word natural on their product because it's not defined. It creates issues. Uh, so you have organizations out there that are trying to go to Congress and get Congress to put pressure onto the FDA to say, hey, it's time that we define something like the word natural to protect the consumer so the consumer knows when they get something that's natural. Here is the definition. They know what it is. When a company like mine manufactures it or a store sells it to a consumer, we all know what it is. That keeps the troll attorneys out of the whole thing and gives the consumer better benefit and better protections. That's just just an idea. What I'm doing out there is my main concern, you know, and this is how we met, is this whole thing about protein spike. Mm -hmm. And from a consumer standpoint, we always talk about protein spiking, but from the other as the other end of it, it's more we're, we're talking about protein calculation and protein calculation between, you know, what the FDA uh, says it should be, where it's a gray area, what's happening out there, and what companies are doing to kind of deceive consumers. And that's one of the main reasons that I'm going out there. Uh, and that's one of the main things I talk about in, in each one of the meetings, uh, because we're trying to get Congress to put pressure on the FDA to change or at least uh, better explain what the testing methodology should, methodology should be so that consumers uh, – are not deceived and are getting what they're really supposed to be getting. Right. So, yeah, when we first met, we were talking about that protein spiking article. And it's interesting, the, the further you go down that rabbit hole, the, the more you see that the, the, in, the word protein isn't even clearly defined because there's uh, so many different ways of measuring it. And if you measure it based upon just the, the nitrogen molecule, which is a very old test, uh, then it can be tricked. And so using uh, cheaper amino acids or even creatine, which has multiple nitrogen molecules, and that tricks things. What I, what I think is interesting here is though that, that you're going to Congress to pressure the FDA. Is that like really how, I, I guess not how it should be, but like, is, why, is that, why is it that the, the process? Why can't you just go directly to the FDA? 
you can. I mean, we're going to, there's organizations going to the FDA, there's people speaking to the FDA, but Congress basically controls that. So you're trying to get uh, people in Congress, senators, congressmen, to support what we're what, what you're doing here. And if you can get their support, then they have the ear of the FDA and they can try and get things moved. So the problem with this whole thing about protein calculation is, you know, like I said before, we talked about protein spiking, but now it's almost it's almost as if it's become legal to protein spike. Mm-hmm. It's a gray area that's accepted. And if you look at the laws and the regulations, it's it's hard to define. And you know, the, the law says that for protein claim, you can do nitrogen testing. Mm-hmm. It's a big issue with that now because a judge has actually found uh, that since the FDA is a federal organization and they allow nitrogen testing, him as a state court cannot override that. And he's blocked his first case from going forward. Even though the company, I'm not going to mention the name, I'm not even going to say that they did anything wrong. I'll pretend they did for the purpose of this conversation. Right. But let's say they had 25 grams of protein in there, uh, claim, but they only had 12 grams in there. The rest came from creatine or something like that. Right, 12 grams the like whey protein. The judge is looking at it and it doesn't matter. Even if they would have not had that protein in there, even if they spiked it with a high nitrogen ingredient, that's allowed because the FDA says you can do that test. And the judge is not you know, learned enough to figure out, okay, the test is a test, you can't cheat the test. You know, mm-hmm. and, and that's a big problem because, and then that was done in summary judgment, so it's not law. But now other judges are gonna look at that interpretation and say, okay, if this judge interpreted that you're allowed to make a claim mm-hmm. uh, for whatever you want, as long as it's nitrogen based, then that's fine. We can't let other suits go forward. So that's kind of the really scary point that we're that I'm really jumping back in. This protein spiking died out a little bit, and now it's happening again, but now it's become more commonplace within the courts to say, okay, how do we define this? We don't know. Well, right, and it's, 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 it's the based. judges. It's the judge's job to actually interpret that law. And I mean, as it kind of stands, that law does kind of allow for a nitrogen test. So um, it does. The I, problem. I get that. That- yeah, you know, the problem with that, Mike, is it allows for the nitrogen test, but it doesn't allow for cheating of a nitrogen test, you know? And the judge, you know, it's so complicated the judge can't figure it out. I give right. this example here. I have a deli down the block, and in New Jersey, you have an NTEP certified scale. That's the state law. So if I go into that deli and I order, you know, two pounds of corned beef, and the guy behind the counter is pushing his finger down on the scale uh-huh. and he gives me one pound, no judge in the right mind is going to say, oh, you use an NPT, NTEP scale, that's what the state required, so I can't override that because you did the right way. Well, no, you did the right way, but you cheated it, and that's what this is. The judge found that because you did nitrogen testing, he can't step in, he can't get involved, and that's fine. But yes, we did nitrogen testing, but we also, the guy also, or whatever, whatever organization does, cheated the testing by adding things into it that are not. Now, here's a, the wild part about this, and I don't know if you and I have discussed this, the judge did let the case go forward on another level. The judge said, okay, for protein claim, and let's make this up, and I'm not accusing any any of this company, I'm just using this case as an example. Right. For protein claim, let's say there was 25 grams based on nitrogen, and there's only half of that in there as real protein. That was blocked from moving forward, that part was dropped. Mm-hmm. But the judge then found, wait a minute, for the daily value, Oh. The FDA does not allow nitrogen testing for daily value. It requires a PDCAS, a protein digestibility uh, correct amino acid score. Nice. So yeah. that, he let that part go forward. So now what companies are starting to do is look at that and say, hold on. If the judge is allowing me to cheat here, all I've got to do is not cheat here. So what I'll do is I'll do a nitrogen test by law. I'll spike it with creatine or taurine or glycine, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I'll put in you know 20 instead of 25 grams, and I can use this judge's finding. Although again, again, that's not it was in summary judgment, right. so it's not law. Uh, and I'll say, okay, that's the case. I'll go on. This is what the FDA says I can do, so I can do it. On the other hand, then I will convert my daily value to the real number based on uh, on, on the digestibility score. So let's say there's only 12 grams in there. I'll drop my protein value from whatever it is, 37 on a DB down to 13. Wait, well, so, what, so they're they're dropping the percent, but not the actual the, They don't have not the they're quantity. Two different, there's two different issues oh my. when you look at the act. If you go to 21 CFR 101.36 and dot nine. So you anybody anybody out there can type in 21 CFR part 101.36 and dot nine. You'll see these these things broken out. 
One is a regulation that says for the claim, you do a nitrogen test. For the DV, for the daily value, you do a PDCAS test. So you have two different tests. So now you go in there and say, okay, I got 25 mm -hmm. grams of protein based on me spiking it. I'll put 25 grams as my claim, but my DV, let's say it was a 25 gram, that would be uh, 20, uh, that'd be 50% protein mm -hmm. based on DV. I'm not gonna put 50% there. Right. I only have 10 grams, so I'll put 22% there. So that is correct. But the claim that everybody looks at, the protein claim is incorrect. Well, nobody, nobody, not a single person out there is ever gonna notice because I've never met a person who goes to the DV, goes online, sees what the daily value is, divides it out, says, hold on a second. This is at 13%, but this says 25, it should be 50%, there's something wrong here. Nobody does that. So now, according to this new, this new theory that this judge found, you can cheat the nitrogen on the claim, the part that everybody looks at, mm -hmm. as long as you don't cheat on the DV, and then you go to court, you might have some basis there, and that's the direction it's going. So like in this situation we're talking about in, in DC, the Natural Products Association is trying to go and get the definition, or at least clarify, have the FDA clarify what that nitrogen test is, so that, it, that you have to either back out any nitrogen that's not protein related, or you have to put a disclaimer on the label that says, hey, the, this protein content is based on nitrogen and not it's not all based on protein or, or do something on there to make it illegal to do that or to re-clarify it because there's two parts of the law that these companies are going on. That section, 101.36 and 9, and then there's that also the other section that they all use when they go, you know, they go into their court cases where it says amino acids are not allowed to be used uh, on their, I forgot the exact word, it basically says amino acids are not allowed to be used in total protein calculation on their own. Right. And what they say is, well, we're not putting them on our own, we're dropping them into a tub with protein in there. Right. So if I, give, if I give you creatine monohydrate, which is not even an amino acid, this is where it all gets screwed up. Because that law says amino acids, creatine and taurine are two predominantly used uh, nitrogenous ingredients that, that lift and spike it up, they're not even amino acids. But either way, if you're using glycine and it's amino acid, uh, you put it in there and you say, okay, well this tub, if I sell you one of my NutriBio 500 gram tubs of protein, of uh, glycine and on the back of it, I put a protein value you would think I'm an idiot. You say mm -hmm. this right. me off. But all of a sudden when I pour that protein into that, excuse me, that glycine right. into the tub, they use that section of the law to say, okay, I'm allowed to, I'm now allowed to, it's not on its own, I'm combining it with a protein source, I'm now allowed to include that uh, value with my total protein. So they, they have now a couple of different ways that they're trying to defend spiking nitrogen. But you know, what you're doing is the most important thing. Just educating the consumer, no, no matter what defense you have, no, what, no matter what bullshit you find out there to defend yourself in either a civil action or just you know, in social media, it's cheating, it's deceiving, it's bad either way. Right. So we have people like you out there that are getting the public to understand that, and I salute you for doing that, and then you have organizations out there that are totally against it. I mean, I don't know any of the trade organizations that support uh, what we call nitrogen spiking or protein spiking or amino spiking, they're all against it. And that's one of the things that we're trying to change. Wow, okay, well, uh, wow. Okay, so thank you. First off, I had not known about the uh, the new way of doing this with the just changing the percent DV. So thanks for uh, thanks for telling us that. It sounds like we need a few updates and it's just so tough to follow all these blog posts or not uh, to follow all these lawsuits and keep everything up to date. So it's like there's just so much going on and uh, it seems like it spirals more and more out of control the more you get into they get into things. We need more. We need more legal reporters. But I appreciate you giving us the update on that because that was something that I never saw. And I honestly, as much as we look at labels, I, you're right. I would. Uh, I look at labels all day long, every day, and I would not have noticed that. And uh, and only a few specific, very specific people probably would have. And they're not. Uh, they're not the ones within the, the massive YouTube channels or anything like that. So it is important that we get the word out there. And it's awesome that that you're doing that. Um, so like logistically, how does this all work when you? So you, uh, it sounds like you're kind of partnering or p piggybacking with the, with the NPA on this Natural Products Association. No, I'm not, oh. Just so we know, I'm not speaking on their behalf. No, you're it's, not. It's, it's, it's me speaking on my, what I, you and I have been talking to for many, many years on this. So let's, I want to make sure that we're aware of that up front. When I was there, I was speaking, you know, I was, I was, I was with them uh, on that particular day. But usually I'm on my own. I mean, this is just something I'm passionate about. Absolutely, so that's just yeah. Basic for me to get out there and to, to get educate, more education on myself, learn how the system works, see what else I can do. Uh, very soon I plan on starting, hopefully get some support by you 
and starting to go directly to Congress uh, and putting a petition out there, get enough signatures on there and see if we can really get a consumer base and a petition base to get out there and make this change and get the FDA to, whether they make it illegal or just, you know, put a disclaimer on a way or do anything, you know, to show that, hey, this is not right. This is not the way to do it. This is deception. and We got to get away from it. So that's my big thing there. But that was only one of the things that was done at that particular uh, meeting. But that was one of the things that I was passionate about. We also did uh, talked about the NDIs. Mm -hmm. uh, the draft guidance. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. That's a big issue to all of us uh, in, in the industry. Uh, yeah, I am. I am familiar. Bruce Neller and I co-wrote an article about that because and I'm not sure if they've changed any of the proposals. Um, before we go any further, though, I, I don't know if I properly introduced you that that you are the founder and CEO of NutriBio and that you do sell protein powders. You do rigorously do third party testing and everything. And um, you're out there in, in New Jersey, you have your own manufacturing facility. And as we've gone further down, we see all these things happening. So it's, it's very important that we uh, educate the consumers as much as possible. And you've done an incredible job of that. So I, I appreciate any that you want to that you'd like to work with us because uh, we will definitely anything that you want to do petitions or otherwise, uh, we'll be shouting that from the rooftops as, with as much as we can. You know, we're we're uh, we're growing so much. And it's important that all the biggest, uh, I guess, influencers out there really uh, do what's best for the consumer. And in this case, and there's not, and, and, and I want to clarify or make sure that people understand, you know, there are benefits to having taurine. There are some benefits to having glycine in certain situations. But when we are ingesting a protein powder, we want to have dietary protein, like whey protein. And those numbers are being cheated. And so I guess um, what I wanted to kind of ask before we get into the NDI thing is like, how does this. Well, let, me, let me just make one other comment sure. on that because we're always talking about protein from a sports nutrition angle. Mm -hmm. You gotta also remember that protein is in diet formulas for children. Mm -hmm. It's in pediatric, it's in bariatric products, it's in post-op products. Mm -hmm. My father is 90 years old, his doctor's having him take a liquid protein product. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. where you get this macronutrient and the source of protein that gets really, really into the health aspect. For, for maybe you or me going to the gym and training and we get ripped off 20% or 30% of our protein, we might not make the gains. But for that infant in his formula not getting right. the proper protein, or for that elderly person not getting the proper protein, or that bariatric pro, pro, uh, consumer not getting, that makes a major health difference. So this whole concept of, of calculating the protein and claiming it properly has a, a much more diverse impact and other than just a small segment of the sports nutrition workout community. It's vast out there. Right. And I, and protein spiking has even been done way back in the, in, there was some Chinese like baby formula that had that, was it the melon? 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 What was it again? Melamine. That's Melamine, what's, yes. Oh, that's man. what started it all. They, they spiked uh, children, infant formulas. And I think they also did, uh, dog food or some cat food or something and the melamine killed the infants and supposedly they were executed or some of those execs disappeared but here uh, over in, in our part of the the world we said hey that sounds like a pretty not us not me and you i should right, say right, that. Right. Yeah. that always comes off his video you know later on as me saying i'm doing people over here in the country said whoa that seems like a pretty cool idea why don't we do the same thing but let's not kill anybody with it <laughs> we can do that all we have to do is something high in nitrogen like melamine so let's use amino acids. And like you said before, creatine is great for you. And there are companies out there, by the way, and I wanna make sure we say this up front, that will put creatine in the product and are not spiking, are doing it the right way, and they will tell you that they're not including it. So we don't wanna you know, make them look bad because there are people there that are doing it the right way. Right. So you know, we got, that's, that's where we have to be careful. I wanna make sure we say that. But, uh, then we, but what, what, exactly what you said, we can put in creatine, we can put in glycine. Glycine is a great ingredient, so it's taurine, very, very important. And they have great benefit, but not when you're taking something out, to, out, out of the product and that macronutrient is what you're purchasing. You're not necessarily purchasing taurine, you're purchasing a macronutrient. So you can't just pull one out for the other and cheat the consumer. Absolutely, and some of the lawsuits kind of try to go down the deceptive labeling route uh, in terms of like, uh, unfair advertising or whatever the words are, but uh, that's not the right approach. I mean, that's uh, you, you use whatever approach you can if, the, if consumers are being just deceived, but we need to have this kind of more uh, clarified. So that's kind of what I want to ask is like, what is the logistical, uh, the day like? Okay, so you drive down to Washington DC or you take your motorcycle on down there or whatever, and you have meetings set up. Are you meeting with the actual congressman or uh, is someone scheduling this? Like how, how does it kind of happen? <laughs> this particular one it was scheduled by the organization I was working with okay you know I can do that here you can do it in your own state so Mike you can go and, and schedule with your 
uh, assemblyman here locally and your congressman and your representatives right in your own states that are meeting up mm -hmm. and go down and speak to them about it and try and get their support as well. It doesn't always work so easy that way because without a large organization behind you that's right. gonna actually make that change and do something, it's just you going and talking. And unless you do something beyond that that they can jump onto, and that's why you do it with larger organizations like the NPA or the Council for Responsible Nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be doing it locally here too, so I'll be doing all my local senators and congressmen here because I'm gonna start this petition and I want them to jump on board. Uh, and I want to get their support on it. So, you know, it's it's the coolest thing, by the way. One of the coolest things that, I, that I've ever experienced is my first time going to, let's say, what we call the halls of Congress. Uh -huh. You know, the, the two or three buildings where the senators and the congresses are in. And it is it is a hall. I mean, these hallways go on for, it looks like a mile. But you walk in, there is nothing there but a, a walk-through security check. So the first time I went, I walked in, and uh, they just checked me for med on it. They didn't ask if I had a appointment with Nancy Pelosi, I never would because I don't like her much, but or whether, <laughs> or whether I uh, have my license or for who I am. So I turned to the security and said, this is a sen all the senators are, are in this building here. Uh -huh. I walk right in this building and walk up to any of them. They said, absolutely. I said, how's that possible? You're just putting me through a gun check. They said, the answer was so cool. They said, this is the people's house. Nice. This is Shoot. And we can't stop you. And you can literally walk in and walk up right to, to Chuck Schumer's office, walk right in on almost every office I saw. There's a sign outside that says, welcome, come on in. And you can sit down. You might not get an appointment. Right, right. But you can walk right in and you're right in their office. So it's a really cool thing. And that that's kind of how it works. It's it's the people who live in the communities where these centers and congressmen are, they want to hear from you. Did you? And they want to impacting you. Gotcha. So did you meet with actual congressmen or congresswomen or was it their aides or? Uh... Their Meeting with their aides or people, sometimes you do, this time I didn't. Uh, but you're meeting with the people involved in their office because you're meeting with a lot of different organizations and a lot of different people to hear a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if anybody else that day actually met with any of the key people. And then you follow through you know, afterwards, which I'll be doing here on a local basis. I have invites out to my local reps to come down here to Nutribio and see what we do here. Because I'll tell you what, in speaking to a lot of these representatives out there, it's no different than what we think about. They don't realize how regulated our industry is. Right, there's a stigma. And that's, I was wondering, like, how do you, how do you get them to care about this kind of thing as opposed to everything going on you know, internationally and there's you know, obviously a lot of political unrest going on in the country. How do you get them to care about protein spiking of all things? Do you kind of have to hit them from that angle of like the bariatric stuff? You know, I, I'm guessing they don't care about uh, dudes in the gym making gains, you know? So, you know, but it's like I said, it's much more than that. It's a health issue. It's mm -hmm. a consumer issue. Uh, it's a consumer getting ripped off, so it becomes like an FTC. There, there's so many impacts of this, and uh, you know, it's a long-term approach. I, I want to try and speed this up by, you know, doing my part outside of what I did a couple weeks ago and what I've done a couple times, and and take it a lot further and, and try and get something moving in the next year or so. Well, yeah, we're absolutely willing to jump in and join in with whatever we can out here, um, and so. Yeah, we're we're out in Texas. We can hit them. We can try to hit them from a couple angles. We have we have fans all over the country, and, and so do you. You have even more on, on your Facebook group and everything, and both have a growing YouTube channels. So it would be interesting to see if we uh, we can make at least a little bit of noise. So in the ideal world regarding protein, what uh, how would you want it to be labeled, or what would like? I know you're not a lawyer, you're not you're not a lawmaker or anything, but how, what do you think would be the ideal law uh, regarding protein labeling? Well, like first. Protein? The first thing I would want to see is two things. A, a disclaimer on that label. If you're not using, if you're putting anything in there that has a high nitrogen value, but I'd like to see the FDA simply, you know, reconfirm what that rule is. Okay, what can you do for nitrogen? If you're putting nitrogen in there that is non-protein, mm -hmm. if you're putting amino acids in there that are non-protein amino acids, meaning they have high nitrogen value, but they're considered an, an NPN, a non-protein nitrogen, and you're spiking it up, that you can't do that. You've got to either subtract that out or worst case scenario, put a disclaimer on the label saying, hey, there's there's nitrogen here for the claim, but it's not all coming from protein and the number might be skewed off. That would be the worst case scenario, but we don't want to see that. We don't want to disclaim we don't we don't want the consumer getting ripped off with a disclaimer saying you're getting ripped off. You know, I would rather see the FDA say, no, if you're doing nitrogen, you have to subtract out. And that's one of the problems is there are there there's no, uh, there. if you send the product to a lab with, let's say, glycine in it, there's no standard to subtract that out. You know, the, the lab, first of all, doesn't know it, so they're right. just testing. 
based on nitrogen and the conversion factor of uh, 6.38 for a dairy protein. And if you threw something in there, they don't know what's in there and they don't subtract it out. But even if they know what's in there, there's no standard. They can't go to any guide uh, and say, look it up and say, okay, six grams of glycine is 230, whatever, whatever, and subtract it out. They can't do it. They then have to get a sample of your glycine, which nobody does, test the glycine on its own, figure it out on its own, and you can't do that. Right. So there's no standard to be able to know. We did a compendium, uh, I don't know, eight or nine years ago on all the amino acids. I don't know if I ever sent it to you. And sh so we can figure out how to do that. But that's not a national standard. That's just me doing it. Right. Like arginine on itself that we found was 2.7 times its own weight. So if you took, if you took a, a gram of arginine and dropped it in the protein, and tested it for nitrogen, one gram of, of arginine or even creatine monohydrate would test out as 2.7 grams yeah. of yeah. protein. Well, that's impossible. You know, mm -hmm. you can't get 2.7 grams out of one gram of anything, but it's you're doing the wrong test on it. Right. And that's why it, it's being cool like that. So I would like to see, without a doubt, a disclaimer on there saying there's there are nitrogen-based ingredients in here that are providing for protein claim, but not giving the actual protein. But really what I'd like to see is the FDA say, no, you know, create, a compendium of all the amino acids, and it's not just amino acids, I mean, caffeine spikes nitrogen. There's a lot of other things that spike nitrogen. I don't wanna to get too much into it because we have other things to discuss. I, uh, urea spikes nitrogen. I, I know if I told you about that case, uh, I think it was, um, uh, I forgot the company name, for, for I think eight or nine years, was buying whey concentrate, uh, Land of Lakes. Big billion dollar company for eight or nine years was buying whey concentrate from whey concentrate Trade producer that was spiked with urea, urine right. from cows. Yeah, there was a commercial product that was made from urine from cows. And this protein company was spiking it, selling that concentrate to Land O'Lakes. It was only for food grade, so it wasn't anything that went into the things, a feed grade, not food grade, that was scary. It was for feed grade for animals. Okay. The interesting thing is, the company got bought out. The new owners figured out, holy shit, we just ripped off Land O'Lakes for all these years. They sued the previous owners. Oh. I don't money, but they sued for like $9 million. Yeah. The previous owners and employees lost, had to pay the new owners. The new owners got all this cash in. Land O'Lakes saw this because the case went public. They sued the company back. They lost. Wow. Okay. <laughs> they lost because there was no basis. The cows never complained. Uh -huh. The owners never complained. Nobody ever complained. Land O'Lakes never had to pay anybody back. They had no loss, so there was no basis of a claim. So the new owners got this cash fall from the previous owners that cheated. There was no criminal charges ever in this whole thing. Huh. And there have been zero criminal charges in protein spiking across the board. All the charges are civil, and they're all done by attorneys that are just doing class action suits, settling on the table, making their money inside. That's why we're going nowhere, and we're not fixing this whole thing. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, there's wild cases out there. Imagine that case. Where not only did they rip them off, but they got they got double their money back, <laughs> and then they they won in the in the suit. It's, it's wild. I'm blown um, away that you know all this stuff. So so where is the uh, where were you left off after you came home? Like what was the next to do item, or where, where did the NPA kind of like find themselves? What's what's the next step? Well, the NPA is doing a lot of work on their own. On my, mm -hmm. on my basis, I'm just gonna I'm starting this petition. I've written letters back to uh, some of these senators and Congress and all, I'm inviting some down here. I have one that I think is, is gonna be coming down here in the next month. Uh, and uh, I'm responding to them. Out of the ones we did, I had two or three that were really interested, you know. I was able to get that aha moment where, you know, they're listening, they're listening, they're writing notes, I'm like, oh, really? Tell me more about that and ask some questions that I have to do follow through. So I'm sending follow through answers to them and hopefully that gets them motivated. But if it just does that and there's no follow through after that, then it's, it's not gonna go where. So you gotta keep pushing and pushing and pushing. So that was just one of the things that, that was being done that the, that day. The other thing that was really big on me was this NDI thing that you were you mentioned earlier. Right, yeah, uh, so uh, where do you even begin with that? So I guess you could explain like wh what were you pushing for, but the FDA is trying to make a new draft guideline of how to declare a new dietary ingredient or NDI. Right. And it's an extraordinarily complex and Kind of confusing oh, yeah. issue, and it, it seems potentially limiting as well. So, um, you ever read the uh, draft guidance? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, not the whole thing, to be honest, but it's, it's the crazy. simple so, parts. And I'm so not sure if I've read the, the most recent one. I'm not sure uh, what when Which the most guess, recent one was published. The original was 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not mm -hmm. the FDA; they had to do it actually. Uh, uh, who was it? Uh, 
food uh, FSD, food safety, whatever uh, act came out and or part of the act that said that they had to do it. So they came out with their first draft guidance on this to uh, further define what an NDI is and what you have to do to make an NDI legal uh, in 2011. So the last guidance was in 2016. So an NDI is a new dietary ingredient. So, you know, people don't realize our industry is regulated. Back to 1994, the Deshea Act came out, and that was the first time that, that we really defined what a dietary ingredient was, what a dietary supplement is. And dietary supplement is something that contains dietary ingredients, and dietary ingredients are listed, that are regulated as a vitamin, a mineral, botanical, an herb, an amino acid, uh, any constituent or, or metabolite. right, yeah. Those and anything that actually adds to uh, your daily intake, mm -hmm. uh, as long mm -hmm. as it's not a, a whole food or a uh, a normal food like an apple or something like right. that. So we know exactly what those are, uh, and that all came about because we we were an undefined industry. There was mm -hmm. no classification as dietary supplement, and the FDA back in the early 90s, 91, 1993, were looking to regulate us. And the way they were going to regulate us was to take dietary supplements and make them drugs. Well, if they did that, we would be out of business overnight because mm -hmm. we couldn't spend the kind of money we have to do to prove things out and, and do all that. And Orrin Hatch, I think it was uh, uh, Durbin, got together and they created this Deshea Act, which you know defined our industry and said, okay, this is what, what we are. And one of the things is creating what a dietary ingredient is. At that point, they said anything prior to, I think it was October 15, 1994, is an ODI. It's an old dietary ingredient. Mm -hmm. It's acceptable. Mm -hmm. It's allowed that we're done with it. You can use those. Anything after that is an NDI. It's a new dietary ingredient. And to be able to use it, there's certain things that you have to do. If it's natural in our in our food, you can use it. Otherwise, you have to put in a, uh, a, uh, a notification to prove uh, reasonable safety. And that's called a NDI notification. And that can cost up to $300,000 to do. And it can take a year or longer to do it. And it's okay. It needs to be done for new ingredients. The issue with this NDI guidance is that it's redefining what Deshea said was an NDI. So an NDI we already talked about is a new dietary ingredient that wasn't on the market prior to that. But now what they're saying is real, something that really is disturbing to me is an NDI is not just the ingredient, but you might need an NDI notification for a supplement itself. So if I have, let's say, nitrosogen, mm -hmm. okay, it's a new dietary ingredient. It's been accepted by the FDA through, through the... Uh, uh, through its notification. And Mark, can, new, you, can you do me yeah. one favor and slide a little bit to your right, like six inches? You, you're following yeah. off camera and my, my picture is blocking you. It's a, I can't get rid of it, so thanks. Uh, so nitrosagene. Um, nitrosagene is now a new dietary ingredient. A notification is put in, it's it's accepted. Not a, it's not an approval process, but it's it's accepted. So you can now use it in your, in your products. Well, up till now, I can now create a pre-workout. I can drop that NDI that's has that's been accepted into my product and I'm done with it. If this new draft guidance goes through as it is now, my new product, my combination product of multiple ingredients would require a notification itself. So if I take that nitrosagene and I mix it with BCAAs, uh -huh. or let's say citrulline right. and adalanine, now I need to do another NDI notification to the FDA, prove that it's reasonably safe, spend a few hundred thousand dollars, and then if I bring it back and I do it again and next month I want to increase my dosage or I want to stick another amino acid in or you want to create a product and you're going to do it a little different, each one of those finished products requires another NDI notification. So it, it, would, it sounds like it's almost a purposeful way of crippling the industry or just making a mountain of paperwork to create a billion government jobs that it just seems like it would never get done. Yeah, it, it would destroy your industry. Well, first, you know, with anything, how are we going to spend the money? I mean, right. the, you know, how are you going to spend all that money, effort, and time when you're doing a new pre-workout or an intra workout or, you know, and put, put, put something in a protein powder or something to enhance it, and you've got to stop and you've got to spend, you know, 12 months, 18 months, hundreds of thousands of dollars, don't know if it's going to go through or not, don't know the politics behind it. It would totally shut down and stifle any growth in our industry. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I don't know if they would grandfather in everything up to now. I guess they would have to. They can't just say everything on the market that had an NDI for the last, since 1994, you got to go back and redo it. I mean, I, there's no way they can do that, obviously. They say you probably grandfather in. But then every time we try and create a new product, 
as long as that NDI, as long as it's an NDI, not an ODI, an old dietary ingredient, you can do whatever you want with it. Mm-hmm. So if there was an ingredient that's accepted back prior to 1994, I can mix it, blend it, do whatever I want. I don't need to do any notification to the FDA. However, if it's a new NDI, a new dietary ingredient, if I blend it with something else, now I've got to do a notification and spend all this effort, money, and time. And if I change it in any way, I've got to redo it again. And if I do it, and then you want to do it, you can't even work off of my NDI. You're going to have to do your own NDI. Uh, so, you know, it, so this is a proposed draft guideline uh, that the FDA wants to, or is, is kind of proposed to push through or whatever. If what what is the next step then? Like usually they they leave open for public comments a certain window or whatever. But but what are you what are you doing with Congress? Are you trying to notify the Congress I, people that this is going to cripple an entire industry, or what do you do? Well, I think that's part of the problem. Is we don't know what's happening. It came originally out in 2011. That was seven years ago. They did a, a redraft, I think, in 2016, mm-hmm. two years ago. You don't know where it's going. So you have a whole industry that's sitting at bay here because it's not just new diets, NDIs going into uh, finished products that you have to do this for, but it also says that any change in the manufacturing process of an existing NDI or an old ODI even, and you might have to do a new draft, a new uh, notification for it if it has certain changes. If you change uh, the impurities of it, or you change it changes the dosage or the use of it. Uh, does, if it's just an exact chemical structure and nothing's really changed, you probably wouldn't have to do it. But if anything really changes in that, you might have to do an NDI, all, uh, not an NDI, a new notification all over again. So it's taking existing ingredients that we might change the manufacturing process of, and now have to have to do a new notification, and it's taking. Uh, finished products and saying if we're going to put an NDI in a finished product, we have to get a, dra- a, a notification for that finished product. So it, it's it's it kind of, you know, being that we don't know what's going on, it's something that we want like the FDA to come forward and and move move forward with it and and see where it's going to go so we can kind of make some decisions on this. And so, but you, you're speaking to Congress people about it though. Oh yeah, I mean that's what you know, there's a lot of associations that are trying to push this because we want we want to you know. I mean, this industry could, I don't think, could ever survive if you have to do a no, right. an NDI notification for every finished product if you're cha- putting a, ch- a change to that or doing anything like that. But it's kind of sitting there right now. We don't know where it's going. So Okay, so you're just trying to get clarification on what's happening and... Clarification. There's certain things we want pulled out of there. Uh, so that, you know, like that we want pulled out, you know, I would want pulled out. I'm sure you would. I'm sure everybody in the industry would. The consumer would because the consumer, you know, the whole idea is to make a product safe but also make the product available to consumers. You want consumers to be, you don't want to make it so tough to create a product that a consumer can't get anything. We also want to make sure it's safe. So if you know the ingredient is safe and you prove it reasonably safe or you've done a gross on it, Mm -hmm. uh, then you can move forward with it. That's kind of what I I think it should be. Unbelievable. So it seems like we just want some common sense regulation. In some some aspects, there's not enough regulation. And then over here, it seems like too much regulation, too much paperwork. Right. It's it, you. We have to massage exactly the the, the right spot here, and uh, you know, I know. Yes, yeah, so I'm on one side asking for regulation, yeah. and the other side saying I don't want that. You know, and, and that's what you do. You know, you're trying to protect the consumer. You know, you gotta you have to look at the industry long term as a as anybody, as you in the industry, as any brand mm-hmm. owner, as any store owner. You have to say the ultimate growth of this industry is making sure two things happen. A, the consumer gets benefit, so they're not getting ripped off by something like protein spiking, and B, there's safety and nobody gets hurt. So this NDI guidance is good because it makes sure that ingredients are somewhat safe before they use. So those are the two things you're really making sure for the long time, unless you're in this for the, and there's a lot of people in there that are just here trying to make a quick buck and get out. Right. But those are the things you're trying to do is protect the consumer from a safety standpoint, and give the consumer something that works, that's ethical, that's gonna give them the benefit that you're promising. And that's kind of you know, the balance that you're trying to create here. Gotcha, wow, okay. So a lot going on, and uh, this is all on top of you running a, a, large, a large and quickly growing company on top of it, handling the manufacturing yourself and everything. You're wearing a lot of hats, Mark. <laughs> Well, I mean, this is what I, this is not this is only one little thing I, I've done, but I've you know for the last uh, you know since 1996, I've devoted an extreme amount of my time to doing this type of thing. You know, it's it's my passion. I got yeah. into this because it's my passion. You know, I've been me and you've been talking many many times about these things. It's not just 
it's not so me uh, that I can compete against somebody else that's cheating. It's because I have a passion for the consumer. I have a passion for the benefit. I know how these supplements work. I know how they can change people's lives. Mm -hmm. And it's not just me. There's a lot of really great companies out there right now. And there's a lot of new people that are coming out that uh, really understand this and are really putting great products on the marketplace and uh, really care about the consumer and are, and are really putting products out there that are ethical and that live up to the promise that they're making. And we, yeah, we all make mistakes. Uh, everybody makes mistakes. We, you know, we, we, we listen to the wrong people. We do things accidentally or, or we just don't know. And, and the idea is just to find out what they are and make a better product. I think the consumer is just a, in a really cool point right now in you know the history of our industry because there's this whole new breed of brand owners and, and entrepreneurs out there that are really looking to create good products ethical products live up to their promise I mean, there's always marketing there's always hype you can't run a business without marketing and advertising and doing all that because nobody will know who you are nobody's going to buy your product that was that old saying a build a better mouse trap and the world will beat a path to your door well we know that doesn't work you can have the best damn supplement in the world if nobody knows that you have it and you're not marketing, no one's coming to you, no one's buying it, you're out of business either way. But you know, there there's that that trade-off point. Yeah. When do yeah. I take marketing dollars away from product quality dollars? You know? When do I say, okay, I want to really sell a lot more, so let me take my product, water it down, or do something in that unethical or do something and put that money toward advertising and marketing. And that's you know, that, that that's you know the the give and take on this. Just because somebody's marketing or advertising or doing stuff doesn't mean it's bad. We all do that. It's where do you stop and say, I'm not going to dilute my product anymore. I'm going to keep my product the way it should be. Where This is it. This is a, the line I'm drawing in the sand. And, you know, everything else goes toward product quality. And that's that's it. Yeah, well, I can tell you, your passion doesn't definitely comes through. Like, you've never stricken me as someone who's just doing this for the sales right now. It's clear that you're into this. I mean, we've, we got to link back to the Nutribio story where you, you go through the whole history of everything and talk about some of those mistakes made. And it's, it's really awesome that you're transparent about that. And the and then it's just kind of follow through with the, with the uh, formulas and how you fully disclose everything. And what's great is that transparency has become such a big thing on social media, on YouTube, on, um, on the internet lately. And so it's like the world has come into your into your turf. And so that's what's been an awesome thing to watch over these last like five, six years or so. And uh, and it, it's clearly working out pretty well for you. But it, it's very clear that you're also uh, extremely passionate about it, like you say. And I, that that definitely comes through uh, very genuinely. So uh, it's it's always it's always a pleasure to uh, to talk to you about this kind of stuff. I, I think uh, at this point, uh, what we should do is uh, we'll drop some links down to the uh, down to what we'll do what to do is we'll see about getting this petition up and people can sign up to to your newsletter or the Nutribio price alerts on price plow and we will uh, be updating everyone when we get that petition going we're going to definitely have to do a newsletter blast about that blog post all that good stuff make it, maybe even make a separate video just really quickly talking about it and so uh subscribe to both channels because there's definitely a lot more to more to come i think what we're going to do is here is uh thank you for having us uh thank you for yeah joining us here today on this video we're going to sign off real quickly and then let's get let's get ready to do another video unless you have anything else to mention about the protein and ndi stuff no no that's it you know i, I was just going to say it's it's you were mentioning other companies doing it it's really cool because there's a lot of companies that do just what i do now mm -hmm. or, or have been too you know it's not just me and a lot of us talk you know a lot of us are kind of friendly in the background it's kind of almost a fraternity of yeah. companies that, you know we realize that we're competing in some aspect but we also realize that we're changing an industry, and I mean, you say a lot, me, 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 but it's not. I mean, there's there's people out there. Nutrex has great products, great formulas. Chris Gethin has great products, great for, and I could go on and on. I shouldn't even mention two names because now other now people. Now you gotta mention them all. Yeah, all right. Well, I mean, there's there's. I hate to say me, it's these all these people are changing the industry, you know, and they're they're you know you speak to a lot of these people and their employees and their staff, and they they're just gung ho and they're passionate and they understand it and, and they care, and and I think that's just great. Yeah. Yeah, but we we definitely have to say thank you for uh, you know I, I don't want to use the word lobbying, but yeah, taking it to Congress and and telling them uh, and trying to educate them on what we need because we do need uh, so to speak a, a veteran presence in the room to be able to do that because you know this industry does have a lot of twenty and thirty somethings and we aren't uh, skilled or or powerful enough to to be able to take it to Congress like you. So we really do appreciate your. Uh, you're doing that on everyone's behalf, especially those who are doing it right, like yourself. So thanks again for uh, for helping out, just doing whatever you can to make sure that the lawmakers understand the, the, really what's uh, what, what we're really doing here, and uh, 
and that the supplement industry isn't necessarily this this bad unregulated thing at all. And so it's much appreciated, Mark. Okay, I appreciate it. Okay, thanks. Well, subscribe to the channel, sign up for Price Law Alerts on Price.com slash NutriBio or the NutriBio newsletter because there's obviously a lot more coming along these lines. And so we thank you for joining. Thanks once again, Mark. Hey, Mike, thank you for everything you do. You're always the, the mouthpiece out there for the industry. I know you get a lot of shit from a lot of people out there because you <laughs> say it with your mind. Sometimes, you know, we say things that are right, me, and sometimes we say things are wrong. But if our heart is in the right way, our passion is the right way, like you're doing it, I think that, that's what moves our industry forward all the time. So I thank you for everything you're doing as well, Matt. Thanks again. Always great to join forces. We'll see you. You got it, Mike. Welcome to Price File.